What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this weekend's video update. Today is Friday, August 7th. I hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, this is exclusively here for pro members. We're going to go over all the alerts. We are going to go over uh, the day trades and we are going to go over our current position. So last night, yesterday, starting at 4 p.m. Central, we did our day trading class. Hope everyone listening got to attend. If not, as a pro member, it's gonna it's there in your membership area. It's in your pro members master course. So when you log into your membership area there, you can view that. You've also got access to the, uh, the indicators that we're using for the day trading, as well as the watch list and the full raw recording. Now it is going to be edited and chopped up into bite sized sections for you. But for now, just so you have access, it's the full raw recording of the presentation ended up going three hours. Uh, the, the actual presentation was about an hour and a half. The class was about an hour and a half. And then I stayed on for about another hour and a half uh, answering questions and just kind of, uh, you know, clarifying some things. So the Q and A is on there as well. So if you haven't had a chance, feel free to jump in. In fact, while we're talking about that, let's just talk about the day trading. So for the week of eight, three to eight, seven, Total profit, a little over $3,200, so a very nice week. Uh, we, so here's, let's break it down by day. So Monday the 3rd made a little over $1,200, all Mighty 90 strategies. Only had one tiny loser in Bank of America, and that wasn't even a real trade. <laughs> that was a mistake on my part where I had an order in, price moved away, I never got filled and I just completely forgot to cancel my order. And so then all of a sudden I heard a cha-ching, uh, which is the sound that I have when an order gets filled in Tastyworks. And I looked and I was like, oh man, I just got filled. So I just got out real quick and it ended up taking a little $20 loss. But otherwise all of them would have been winners, but real money is what the truth is, right? P&L is the truth of trading. So if you make a mistake, that's still 20 bucks out of my account. So that counts. So. But still a good day, 1239. Next day, 84 on Tuesday, lost 390. Uh, the big mistake here was in Baidu. Now, what happened was when I entered this, uh, or after I entered it, it was it was just moving really weird. Like the, the stock was moving in my direction, but I was it was I was not profitable. I went back and looked at the options chain, which I didn't look at close enough whenever I entered the trade. And the spreads were crazy wide, like a dollar, dollar fifty wide. And I'm not sure exactly what was causing that. It stayed that way for about an hour or so. And after I got out of the trade, I checked back later that morning and they had they had uh, shrunk back up to their normal kind of 15, 20 cents wide. But it was really weird. And so uh, that was one that I just should have just gotten out of as soon as I realized that. But I tried to hold on, make it back and Anyway, ended up being an $810 loss. So that was a bad one. That was my worst uh, worst trade of the week uh, for sure. But still, you know, manageable loss. Only down $390 for the day. Uh, the next day, Wednesday, uh, $476.50. Uh, traded pretty good that day. Had some small losers, but really cut those losers short. And um, had some nice winners in Facebook, Shopify, and Tesla. And then on the sixth, uh, had a had a, a, a sizable loss in Facebook. That one just took off and ran off on me, but still managed. Not a not a terrible loser, but 415 bucks. So the mighty 90 overall was a little bit of a loser on Thursday. Uh, but I had a monster uh, pairs trade that I did in gold and silver, and so that uh, that put me at a nice profit for the day of 1885. And then Friday today, I did not trade. I had I had. Uh, uh, some zoom meetings with a developer that I was on for about over two hours. And so I did not do any trading on Friday, but Monday is our first day of live stream trading. So, um, show you what that looks like. Bring this over here. Well, here's here. So here's the total of what we're at. We're up over 18 grand since I've been tracking these since 522. Now, some of these are pairs trades. Some of these are mistakes and, and testing and things like that. So it's not, you know, a real, uh, you know, kind of a, it's not an official track record. This is just something I'm keeping track of and sharing with you. Once we get rolling with the live streaming, we'll, we'll provide more of an actual um, kind of a track record. 
But it is what it is. It's real money. In fact, uh, my account's up over 27000 uh, since I've been doing it I, and that was before I was even kind of tracking it. So uh, good stuff and look forward to uh, to doing more of this with you. I hope you guys got a lot out of that uh, class last night. Uh, I think it was pretty pretty beneficial for a lot of people. Got a, got a lot of good feedback. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, make sure you do this weekend. Get ready for Monday. It's going to be fun stuff. And then, um, and then Tuesday. So, so we're the, so remember I'm doing at least 12 days a month in the live stream to start. Uh, the first one is Monday, August 10th. Uh, you'll be able to join in, ask questions, chat, and you'll hear me calling out trades and that kind of stuff. And then right below that is the live stream schedule. So I am going to be traveling and out of town on Tuesday through Friday next week. So we're not going to, so only Monday of next week is the only day we're going to have it. And then every day the following week, and I'll continue to update this, but, uh, at least 12 days a month, we'll eventually get to the point where we're doing it every day. Um, and, and we'll, uh, We'll, we'll get to that point, but just starting off, this is what we're doing. So we'll kind of have a schedule down here. So check that, uh, you know, when you're in the live stream room, just make sure you know when we're on, when we're off, uh, Tuesday through Friday next week, we are off, but Monday we're on. And then the following next week, we're all on all, uh, every day. So, and we're going to be streaming from, y'all you know, probably get on there about, <clears throat> I don't know, eight o'clock or a little bit before the market opens and uh and to, to ask uh answer questions and then i'll stay a little bit after so i'll probably be on there for a couple hours uh each day so that's the plan so make sure you check that out and if if uh so remember the um as an annual pro member if you're an annual pro member you get access to that live stream room uh, we also have a, just a separate membership specifically just for day traders um that they can join and then um monthly pro members you, you get you get access to the course, the indicators, all that stuff, but but there is the the additional for the day trading. And either you can upgrade to be an annual member or you can do stay at monthly with the pro membership and go to uh, just add the uh, uh, add the day trading for 49 bucks a month. So that's how that is structured. Uh, you annual pro members are committed to us, and so we're committed to you. So that's why we wanted to structure that and and give that give that all to you. So hopefully, hopefully you like that. Um, all right, so let's jump in to the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 3rd. Had a bunch of alerts today, but so we got actually quite a few alerts, a little bit more than normal. So we'll go ahead and run through these, starting with the first one was, yeah, gold. Okay, so did a closing adjusting trade in gold. So gold ran higher. And we had an iron condor on, broke through the, uh, 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 broke through the, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. Closing, this is the closing adjusting one in gold where we had, we had two different iron condors on. This one uh, got to around 30% of max profit. So we just closed that out and booked it. We were only in the trade for six days. So we got a quick profit, took that off. All right, so that's that one. Uh, we had another gold trade in here, which kind of uh, threw me off for a second. Uh, next trade was an SPX weekly double calendar that we got in. This one had four days to expiration. So we added this one. We had put one on the week before. So we were holding two of those. And so I'll get to the closing trades of those here in a minute. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So our bond uh, short strangle, uh, we got down to 18 days to expiration. So we're down under that 21 days. So we went ahead and rolled that out to 53 days and adjusted our uh, calls. Uh, so the reason we, we typically, we were gonna adjust our puts up because they were uh, getting a little bit far away. And so we wanted to roll those up and we, were, we would t normally keep our, um, our call strikes the same, but they were fairly deep in the money and the liquidity just wasn't there in the 172. So we went ahead and just rolled our calls up too. And so this is essentially almost a straddle. Uh, it's a little tiny bit inverted, different strikes. So, uh, and we rolled our puts up uh, from 177 to 178. And so let's go to the platform. I'll show you what that looks like at this point. ZB. A uh, nice move down today, so getting this back to center here. But like I said, basically it's a straddle, but the strikes are one different. So we got the 178, 179, uh, and so we're pretty pretty centered here. We we're up about 260 bucks since we did that roll. Still working our way back to profits in ZB. 
Next trade, Apple, rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So we've got this long put vertical on that we've been holding for that short delta exposure. They had a bang out earnings went against us. So price was kind of far away of getting back to the end range. So we just rolled this. We want to keep this as the short delta in our portfolio. So we just uh, extended duration and uh, adjusted our strikes accordingly. So if we take a look at Apple, it's down 2.5% today, which is good. So it, it it marched higher and then it came back down into range. So hopefully we can get a little follow through to the downside in Apple. It's just been a beast to the upside uh, this last week and a half. Uh, so hopefully we get a little two-sided action coming down. And remember, uh, they do, and it's, it's marked on the toss charts here, they, they're doing a four for one stock split on August 31st. So that'll affect the options as well. So if you have actual shares of Apple stock, you know, it'll go from, let's call it 440 down to 110. So it'll, it'll cut down uh, in, in, a, in a quarter of what it is as far as the price, and you'll get four times as many shares as you own. And then the same thing will happen to the options, which is kind of goofy holding an options trade over a stock split. You're going to get these uh, weird, goofy strikes, but um, that's okay. I mean, the, the values don't change. It just is going to look a little bit goofy when you look at it at first. So we'll, we'll talk more about that when it happens and, 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 and what to look for um, on, the, uh, on that actual position. Next trade, closing trade in IWM. So we had a bunker. We just went ahead and closed that out. We, were, we weren't quite to 60 days to expiration, but our P&L was starting to sag in that in that valley. So we didn't want to, you know, let that eat away at us. So we just went ahead and closed that. And we're gonna we're, we want to enter another one. In fact, I hope hope we don't. Uh, I was looking at entering another one today, but I, I figured I'd give it a little bit more time. Uh, probably do it in IWM. IW, IWM was actually up over a percent and a half today. So I was looking at adding another one in IWM, but I still think this thing has a little bit more legs to the upside. So it's going to give it till next week, but I would like to put on an, a, at least one, maybe two more bunkers in the next couple of weeks, maybe one in IWM and another one in QQQ. Uh, so look for that in the coming weeks, uh, start to get some more, more downside protection on. Uh, next trade, closing trade in RUT. So we had an iron duck in RUT, price ran up. I uh, had very little chance of getting back to the duck head, so we went ahead and just booked this, took the beak profit, and ran. Uh, so we're out of rut. I was looking at doing another one today. Ended up doing it in SPY instead, which I'll get to uh, here in just a second. Uh, opening adjusting trade in SPY. So we added another iron condor in SPY. So let's take a look at our SPY positions. Uh, and, and look at this thing, man. I mean, it's just it's just on that. I mentioned in the video earlier this week, it's on a death march. Uh, it's that grind higher. We, I'm hoping this doesn't turn into one of those long continuations to the upside, but uh, hopefully we get a little bit of two-sided action next week because those are just brutal when they really start to extend and volatility collapses and, 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 and. So hopefully that, that's not what we're looking at. Uh, so, okay, so SPY, let's go to the Analyze tab, check out our positions, starting with the Iron Condor that I just mentioned. If I can get my toss screen to go up, there we go. So let's get off that duck, let's click on our Iron Condor, which is right here. So we're pretty well centered here, not much P&L since we, since we added that. Uh, and while we're here, let's just go over the other SPY positions. The other one is we've still got the short call vertical spread from our previous iron condor. And so we need some downside action to get back into range there. Then we've got our iron duck. We've got three different iron ducks. So this is the one that we put on today. Oops, this is, what did I do here? Yeah, okay, so this is the one that we put on today. Uh, and so you can see it's pretty close to where we put it on. Then we've got a, another one here. Oops. No, I'm sorry. This is the uh, this is the short call vertical that we've that we that we need price to come down and to get back into range. Sorry about that. Just clicking on the wrong things. And then the one with August 17th expiration. It's this one here. It's an iron duck. So this one's run up the beak. We're almost to a point. Set our uh, date to the expiration date. So this one is. I mean, it's. 
you know, less than 10%. So I tried to get filled on this, but it's still not a full beak profit. So I'll give it another, probably, probably on by Monday, we'll be able to just take this off, book that beak profit. And then same with this one, I was trying to get closed for a dollar on this one today, never got filled, but same situation. We're in a situation where we've got a little, very little chance. Let me get the date right on this. We've got a very little chance of getting back to the duck head. So I was trying to just book this, didn't get filled. So we'll try again on Monday and then we'll be able to free up that capital, redeploy it into, into additional trades. I will still, you know, especially if we have a down day on, on Monday, I want to look at a, uh, adding another iron duck in rut if it uh, works out well. So that's the plan. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we, this is where we close the put vertical side of that iron condor, still holding the call vertical side. So need that downside movement to get back into range on that piece. Uh, opening trade in Disney. So we did some uh, uh, earnings ducks this week, uh, this one in Disney. And uh, Disney ran up after earnings, so we uh, we actually still have this on. The market's uh, just closed, so I'm getting ready to actually send out an alert. So that by the time you view this, uh, you will have gotten this alert, but we've uh, you can still see it in the platform at this point. We've still, we've still got this iron duck, and don't pay attention to the P&L line because the market's closed, closed about an hour, uh, 30 minutes ago. Uh, an hour ago, sorry, uh, but price ran higher. So we're going to book that beak profit of 52 bucks, but we can let these expire because it's up the beak. Uh, one op one of the calls gets assigned, one gets exercised, they cancel each other out and you just keep the, uh, keep the beak profit. So I was trying to get filled to actually exit this instead of letting it expire, but that um, never got filled. So with toss, they don't charge a, an uh, assignment or exercise fee. Um, so that's why we're just, it's better off for us to just let it expire. Now, if you have tasty works, then you may want to think about closing these out, pay the, uh, because there's no closing commissions, but they do have exercise fees. So, um, just a little note on that. So that's Disney, uh, next trade here. Let's go to beyond. So we did a, a reverse iron duck over earnings in beyond. And this one price moved way down, which was way down the beak uh, on our on our uh, on our trade. So if we look at beyond, same thing. Was trying to get filled on this, never got filled. So we'll let this expire. Just book that beak profit, small profit, fifty seven. But again, that's the goal. We just don't have risk to one size, uh, to one side, and we just book a little bit of a profit. So I'll send out an expiration trade on that one as well. Next trade, Twilio. Now this one pissed me off. Now I don't like I don't get I don't get mad at trades anymore like I used to, but this one made me mad. Uh, this was one that um, we had an earnings iron duck on. Uh, price was just kind of hanging out near the upper end of the range, and then start, kept creeping down the last couple of days, moving down into the duck head, and then it moved down even more down to uh down to out now it's not not on here because we already closed it out but i'll show you a chart so uh t w l o so it you know it, it just it just continued dropping after earnings i thought we had a really good chance of hitting it in the duck head for max profit and then it just really collapsed and I was, I had an order in today to get out for, for basically a scratch trade and it was hanging out right there. I was just waiting to get filled. And then literally five minutes later, I look at it and, and it's down, it dropped like a rock. And so we had to end up just closing this one, taking a loss on it. So that was, that was a little bit frustrating, but that's part of the game. You know, I mean, it's, you're, you're doing these over large number of occurrences like we talk all the time so you can't base anything just on one trade but it was frustrating that we a we had a chance at max profit and then b was going to we we're going to get out at a uh uh get out at a uh uh you know a no loss and then all of a sudden boom it it dropped and we we ended up taking a loss so that was a little frustrating but that's trading uh, next trade, opening adjusting trade in GC. So this is where we added an iron condor in gold. And so if we take a look at GC, finally getting a little bit of downside action. Uh, so we've got two pieces on here. We've got one where we closed out the put vertical side. So price is out of range. So we need some downside action to get back into range on that piece. And that's an alert that I'll touch on here just in a second. But this is the other one that we added, and so you can see price is hanging out right here, uh, well within range, so just looking for some time to pass and some theta decay on that one. 
And then this is the closing adjusting trade where we closed out that put vertical. Closing trade in Facebook. So we had a post earnings short put vertical in Facebook. This one worked out really nicely. Booked over, or actually, I said over. We actually booked right at 50% of max profit on this one. We sold it for 4.22, closed it for 2.11. So booked exactly 50% of max profit on that one. So nice trade there. Uh, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is a long put vertical that we're just holding for that short delta exposure. This one got down to 15 days and was a little ways out of range. So we just rolled it out to 43 days to get back into positive delta, keep that short delta in our portfolio. So if we take a look at ES, we've got we've still got two pieces here, the two long put verticals, that one just outside of range. And then this one that we just rolled uh, just inside range here. NG rolling adjusting trade. So uh, this one, you know, in hindsight, we wish we would have rolled last week because we would have collected a bigger credit and locked in some locked in some gains on the roll. Uh, but in this case, we still we still got a nice credit. I mean, we um, uh, we bought that one back for 0.383, sold this one for 0.628, but didn't lock in the credit as well as if we had because it was dead centered on uh, I think Thursday or Friday, but it wasn't quite down to 21 days to expiration. So we waited and it made a big move. It was, it was up like 16% in one day, uh, but still still in good shape here. If we take a look at, at Natty Gas, whoops, wrong one. If we take a look at Natty Gas, up another 3% today, but you can see where pr price is hanging out right here. So still within range. So we just need a little bit of downside action in Natty Gas to benefit that one. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So we had uh, one, we had two different SPX weekly calendars on. This one moved out of range. You know, I mean, obviously with SPX, I mean, if we take a look at a chart, I mean, this thing just rocked to the upside all week. So never got any kind of downside, never got any kind of implied volatility expansion. So nothing but an IV, uh, you know, contraction as well as a move up. And so we ended up closing that one out for for loss. Uh, and then the other one we closed out for a winner. Let me just get to that and I'll come back. So that one we closed out for uh, like a 200, 200 and some dollar winner on that one. So one loser, one, one winner. But those have been extremely profitable for us over the last several weeks. Uh, SPY Iron Duck. So this is that SPY Iron Duck that we opened. I already showed you that. IWM rolling adjusting trade. So did a couple rolls today. Uh, IWM, the long put vertical, just holding this for that short delta exposure. So we've still got two pieces on an IWM. One's in August, one is in September now. So here's the one that is in August still. And that one's out of range. So we're, we'll potentially roll that next week. And then the one that we rolled in September, pretty close to where we rolled it, just inside the range here. That's the SPX. DIA, we also rolled. So we've got two sets of short call verticals in DIA. Again, holding for that short delta exposure. Uh, this is the one that we rolled out to September. So price just inside the range there. And then this one's still in August. Uh, price a little outside the range on that one. Twilio, I hate you Twilio. There's that closing trade. Uh, and then we opened up a new weekly double calendar today with seven days to expiration in the front and 10 in the back. So if we take a look at that, pretty close to where we put it on. Uh, market moved up a tiny bit and we're up a tiny bit on it. So hopefully we get a little bit of implied volatility expansion next week. That'd be nice for once. We didn't get any of that this week. So uh, hopefully we get a little bit of that next week and, uh, and come out good on this one. We'd like to add another one of these. So if we do get a price, a big price move down or up, you know, if it's dead center, we probably won't put another one on just because I don't want to double up at the same price point. Uh, but we're, if, if we're, if we move a little bit in one direction or another, we will, uh, we'll go ahead and add another one like we've been doing to the SPX weekly double calendars. And that's it for the alerts. Yeah. So let's go over the other positions that we have not touched on starting with DE. So DE, don't pay attention to this PL line, but DE is a little out of range. So we'll look to potentially roll this next week. That's in August. So we could roll that one out to December or excuse me, September. Uh, there is uh, earnings coming up here in a couple weeks, uh, but we'll be holding this through earnings. We're just holding this for that short delta exposure. Uh, let's see what else. IWM QQQ. I don't think we mentioned Qs, did we? So we've got a bunker in the Qs, 
And we'll look to uh, add another one here. This is in October. So we're getting near that 60 days. And obviously with the with the market uh, marching higher, we'll probably take a, a small loss on this one. We'll add another one out with further duration. And then uh, we've got this short call vertical in September, which is just outside the range. And this one, which is just outside the range as well. This one's in August. So with, uh, with our short delta, to give you an idea of where we're at, we're at about two to one on our short delta versus our theta. So some, some downside action next week will definitely be welcome for our portfolio. We've got SMH, we've got an adjusted short strangle. You can see prices hanging out uh, right at the break even point here. And so we could use a little downside action in SMH as well. We're not looking to adjust this. I mean, we've got, we're in September with a ton of time. And we've also got a bunch of premium left in those puts, so not looking to make any additional adjustments on that one yet. Uh, XBI, we've got this adjusted strangle. It's actually a straddle at the 105 strike. Price is hanging out right here, so just waiting for some more time to pass. A little down movement there would be nice as well. And lastly, XLK, long put vertical that we've got out in September. Price is just outside of range, so looking for some downside to get back into range on that one. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Uh, that's all I got for you. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Look forward to streaming live day trading Monday morning. See you then.